Father in heaven, thank you for the safety and travel bringing us to this point. Thank you for the experiences we've had. And Lord, we uh, pray now that you would guide us. We pray that you would bring people that need to hear the words of your gospel. Lord, we pray that you would give us boldness and uh, that you would do some eternal things in the hearts of people tonight. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, which one would you like? Yeah. Entertainment. What cartoon character gets his strength from eating spinach? Popeye. 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 I'll go hard. Am I going to go hard? <laughs> hard, do hard, do hard, do hard, do hard, do right, do right, do right, hard. Do right, do right, hard. Oh. And I'm doing Michael Jackson there, but don't, don't. That's bad. Which imaginary creatures have noses that grow upwards as they get older? Munchkins, who's, or thumb thumbs? Thumb thumbs? It is who's. Someone stands up in the court and says, Judge, I love Brad very much. Here's $250,000. I sold my house, my car, my retirement, it's everything I've got. And he pays that for me. What happens to me, Callie? I go free, right? The law has been fulfilled. So there's not anything funny going on. The loss of fill is just as though I pay my debt to society like paying my ten, my five years. Okay, so now the one that stands on the courtroom and pays the price, that's like what Jesus has done. He I never lied, he like never that. stole, he never blasphemed, but yet he paid the price that we deserve. Well, I was kind of surprised that the people seemed to be really having fun and they were enjoying the trivia. Well, it was a lot of fun and a lot of people seemed to get into it. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was a new experience for me, and I would be kind of excited to go out and do it again because it's just interesting to see all the people interact with you. It was really interesting to see that a lady came up and talked to right afterwards about her faith. I really enjoyed hearing um, Brad speak on, I don't know what he called, soapbox preach. Yeah, what, yeah. That, was, that was really fun. I enjoyed that a lot, even though I didn't really get a chance to talk with anybody in the crowd much. I really enjoyed seeing that develop. I, I enjoyed watching the crowd because it was interesting. I was kind of at the back, and the crowd never did move back, so we could talk to very many. They mostly were just right up next to where you were talking, which surprised me that they were so vocal and they were having a good time. <laughs> I thought it was fun. And they were all really excited to get the $10 big prize for the good person test. And of course the woman who took it failed. But I think she was really listening to what Brad was saying to her and a few people stayed afterwards to talk about it so I hope it had an impression on them. The crowd was very receptive I thought. They were, they were energetic and fun but they were very vocal and giggling and laughing and having a great time with it and then when he got around to giving the gospel message they were still receptive and enjoyed listening and would have stayed I think longer had the police not made us disperse. I was surprised that they all participated when you ask all the questions the all of the crowd that was there was saying oh, yeah you know you're you're a thief or yeah, they all. yeah you're a liar you know. Well um, I thought I already gave a million dollar bill so I walked over and thought that well you know, I'll just ask him if he's gotten one and if he, you know, ask him what he thinks of it since he already had one. So we started talking about that and mentioned it had a gospel message. And we asked him if he had any religious beliefs and he said, well, you know, it's, I, I tried Christianity for a while, but it didn't really work out for me. Just not my thing. And kept going through the conversation and he just kind of found out he was lost. He, he didn't know what to believe. He didn't really believe in evolution, but he didn't know if there was a God out there, and if there was, what he was going to do. And so I tried to tried to get him to think that, well, you know, if you're wrong, you know, you don't want to be messing around with your eternal destination. After Josh gave him the Gospel of John, he went over to the corner and started to read it, waiting on his girlfriend that was talking with Brad. Do you need a comb? I was just thinking about the events of the evening, and uh, wow, <laughs> divine appointments. I was trying to demonstrate how to pass out gospel tracts, so I had a couple of the students from Nebraska with me, and um, I was like, okay, I'm going to give it to these two people, and they walked by, 
and the the woman kind of pulled on her boyfriend's arm and so I avoided them kind of thinking that she was trying to save him from the Christians or something so I was a little so I was like okay that's how you do it guys and I didn't do anything so it's kind of a joke and so then I felt additional pressure the next people I better give one to so I gave um, I handed it to the guy I said you get one of these and he's like uh, and I was like man it's a million dollars he looks at it and he looked at me and then he turned around he's like come here I'm like what? <laughs> like, okay. And uh, he's like, you need to talk to her. I was like, all right. So um, his girlfriend's like, I just, um, I want you to pray for me. I need you to pray for me. I was like, wow, okay. I was like, well, let's go around the corner here because the police don't want us on the, on the street. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, I've been looking for you. Um, I heard what you said there on the corner and I've been looking for you. And um, you know, pretty, pretty much that's the only people I gave a track to the whole night and we spent about 20 minutes talking and Laura came and we prayed with her and uh, she, it, it was, she couldn't really even express in the words what she was feeling. Uh, you could tell that God was really moving in a significant way. It was, it's awesome. <laughs> But we kind of walked along trying to hand out the million dollar bills and say, can you make change? And they'd go, they go, no. And then they'd look at it and, ah, that's pretty funny. And I found a couple of guys just standing on a street corner. So I went up and asked them the same question. One guy was kind of into all different kinds of religions, all different kinds of ideas, and uh, sampling different ones, so I just started asking him spiritual type questions to get him to explore his own thoughts, what he understands, and kept pushing towards heaven and hell and eternity, and if there's a God, uh, would it make sense, is it reasonable to say that he would judge, that he would hold people accountable, and he said, yeah, that's, that's a good point, and uh, so I was able to bring in then the gospel and what Jesus has done. Uh, and that whole length of the conversation, I think, really helped him to relax. And by the end, he reached down his backpack and said, Hey, can I read you something I wrote? So he read it to me, and it's you know, off the wall, whatever, but I listened to it and, and uh, listened carefully enough that I could talk to him about it afterwards. And he thought that was really cool that I was listening to him. And he, then he said, well, I want to give you my card. It's got my email. I want you to email me. So, good follow-up opportunity.